Hi there and welcome to Funky Fold Friday. I'm Barbara from Studio at 316 and I'm an independent demonstrator with Stamping Up here in the UK. Um, today I'm going to show you a, how, to make, how I make a box card. Um, my basic box is the same as you've probably seen on a lot of videos out um, in the cyber world. Um, but it's the decoration of the box that I do a little bit differently. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to make the basic box. Now you're going to need three pieces of card for the basic box. Um, so your first one is ten and a half inches by six inches. And then you have two sections which have been cut off from the A4 card. So when I've cut that to six inches, I've then used this section and cut two off which measure Two, uh, three and a half inches in length and then it's about two and a quarter in um, depth but as I say it's just the ends of the A4 sheets so I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer to do my scoring you can do this on a scoreboard as well and the first me measurement we're going to do the first score line we're going to do is bring it from here we're going to score at oh, move that across a bit we're going to score half an inch. So making sure I've keeping my um, cutting blade, which is the dark grey one, well out of the way. I'm going to score that at half an inch. Then I'm going to move it along and we're going to go to three inches. Five and a half inches. eight inches and then we're going to turn the cardstock around and we're going to go to two and a half inches and we're going to score from this end to the one two third score line so we've got the small flap at the top here the small section I'll just pull that out and lift it up a bit higher so this is this small section here is the bit that's going to the top of your trimmer so we're two and a half inches and we're scoring to scoring along one two three score lines and stop there lift up your trimmer um, uh, your trimmer runner bring your blade at uh, your scoring um, piece to the end here and you're just going to score to that first line so we're just scoring that little tab section to the first line so what you get is if I can angle it so that you can see how it's scored just about you can see that we've got a score line up to there and another score line there but we've left this section in one piece okay while we've still got the scoreboards out we're going to take our three and a half inch pieces and we're going to score half an inch on each end so half an inch that end and half an inch that end and we're going to do that on both pieces now these are your um stretcher pieces that go in the middle of your box so that it helps it to stand up solid when you have it standing so that's all the um, scoring we need to do so we can put the trimmer out of the way bring this piece back in now we're going to need to do a bit of cutting so I have drawn out for you how we're going to do the cutting put it the right way up that helps so here's our piece of Hard. so we've got ten and a half inches by six inches and while I've got this out your metric measurements for those that do metric are 26.8 centimeters in length and 15.2 centimeters in height and then you're going to do your scoring um, I've actually written this the other way round but your scoring is going to be basically every two and a half uh, every six and six point three centimeters 
for the main sections and then you're going to do uh, you're going to do you're going to be left with that little section on the end I can't remember what that little section measures in, cent in centimeters but you're going to be doing every 6.3 centimeters I will put all these measurements onto my blog um, and I'll also put them down on the description on the YouTube video so now that we've got that we've got our score lines in place so the um, we're now going to do some cutting so we're going to cut down each of these three lines just down to that middle score line okay so the red eye score lines I'm going to cut down these three sections and we're going to cut down this one to the score line and then we're going to just notch that piece off so we're going to lose this piece here and we're just going to have this tab here as our glue tab okay so I can now put that bit out of the way I'm going to take my paper snips you may find this easier with large scissors but at the moment I don't know where my large scissors have gone you gotta love teenage kids so we're just snipping down and what I'm doing is I'm just cutting either side of the score line so when you when you've got the score got a score line there ooh, there we go we'll angle it that way uh, there we'll use this one so you've got a sort of a little um, valley here so I'm cutting just either side of that little dip okay so it's just cutting a very small section of the card away from the piece so we've got this very thin ribbon of card there and we're going to do that on all three of these sections just need to angle it slightly so that I can see where I'm cutting and up to that one and there and then finally this last one here angling that to the score line and down there now on this end piece we're just going to cut down on the um, the this side so the side that's next to the large section so we're cutting down there because we're going to cut away the rest of that score so we're coming down whoops that that to the score line and then if we just turn it around we're just going to cut a little notch out of there like so just so that it angles it slightly so that when we put the box together um you don't you won't get um this piece coming up over the edge of your other side now we're going to just snip these little pieces off at the score line come on oops come through two three so there we've got our basic box I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to start with folding these score lines so just turn it over and fold the score lines away from you so we're folding them that way we're just burnishing them with a bone folder just to give a nice crisp fold and that helps it to stand up straight then we're going to turn it back over so that it's got its right side facing we're going to leave this piece alone which is the piece that's not been scored because that wants to be our upright at the back and we're going to bring each of these three squares down like so and just burnish those and that's going to give our little flaps at the side so you can see when I when I do that oops a little bit wonky you can see when I do that that you've got these that these edges don't quite meet but that just gives it a just makes it look a little bit neater and put that to one side for a second and then 
we'll do these while we're got we've got the bone folder out so both flaps are going to fold to the same side and that gives us a stretcher section that's the same width as the card and we need two of those one and two so we can put those one side for the moment so that's the basic folding and scoring for your um, box and I'm going to decorate the outsides of the box you can decorate it you can decorate these pieces as well I don't personally I leave these sections um, as cardstock and also the backs of the flaps as cardstock um, because nobody really sees those sections and, um, and then I decorate the three little flaps I decorate the back and I decorate uh, decorate the the front of the back and then I decorate the back of the back so that's where you've got your message panel okay so we're going to take our, pa our paper and for this one I have chosen to use the free as a bird no bird ballad right right one bird ballad paper designer series paper and let me just move the decoration off um, bird ballad paper and I've taken the sheet which has the little footprints little bird footprints and the oops that's one side for a minute and the opposite side of that which is um, sort of blue background with some yellow flowers this side does have birds on it as well if I show you that side it does have some little birds on it but I've just cut it so that there aren't any birds on that section because we're going to decorate it with birds I have got a little bit there but that won't matter and we've also got so these pieces measure two and a quarter inch square this piece measures two and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches and then this piece of white whisper white cardstock also measures two and three two and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches uh, that piece I don't need at the moment in fact I don't need that piece at all so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach our three squares if you've got a directional paper make sure that it goes in the right direction um, so I'm going to flip that over so that I'm decorating the um, sides of the flap that fold, fold, that, fold down so it's folding in that way and I'm decorating these bits of the flaps I hope that makes sense so just a little bit of liquid adhesive is the easiest way to do it because it gives you a little bit of time to if you've seen any of my videos or in fact any of most Stamping Up Demonstrators videos it we all let you know that it gives you a little bit of wiggle room um, so it just takes a little bit of time to adhere and allows you to slide it around a little bit whereas our snail and our tear and tape don't give you that luxury once it's down it's down unless you are very lucky so liquid adhesive and we're just centering those in those squares just by eye it's only a small borders so there's no need to get a ruler out they're quite easy to do by eye just make sure you've got an even border on all four sides before you press it down okay so that's those three sides now I'm going to do the inside of the back piece so the opposite side of the designer series paper now these designer series papers will be leaving us um, on the 2nd of June or when we run out of stock um, whichever comes soonest so if you do like these papers um, assuming they're still available when you watch this you can order them through my shop and I'll give you the details for that at the bottom in the comments as well okay so that's that side I'm going to put this to one side for 
a minute because what I want to do is I want to decorate this um, panel before I stick it on. So I am using the flowers, the two little flowers from the Dress to Impress stamp set. And this one is a really lovely set um, which is very, very girly. Um, and we've got lipstick and we've got a, a, pair, a, a shoe and some perfume. Um, and then these little roses, at least I think they're roses, um, that, that I just think are a really nice size for this, this kind of card. So I'm going to use these and my, 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 there it is. I'm going to take my black memento ink, this is tuxedo black, and my little stamp block. And then all I'm going to do is just stamp some little uh, one there one in the middle there oops so this is the single rose I'm going to do one there and I'm stamping them off the side of the panel because I don't want to take away too much of this section because that's where you're going to write your message so you want a bit of room to do that and I'm just turning them around a little bit as I go and uh, just give that a wipe on my Simply Chamois, my very dirty Simply Chamois, which needs to go back in the dishwasher. Best way to clean these, the, sh the Simply Chamois, is to um, just stand them up in the top drawer or top, top tray of your dishwasher. It does change the colour, um, it, it lightens it considerably, but the colour doesn't really matter. So it does clear, and that's, that was well and truly dirty, and it does clear most of the ink out. You will get some left, but it's a good way of cleaning them. And then you just let them dry. So that's your, your sh simply, simply chamois. So I'm going to take now the double stamp. No, I'm not. I've just done that, Wally. Right, so I've now got the, the double rose stamp, and I'm going to do two of those in between those gaps turn that around for this one easier two there two there and i'm just going to put one at the bottom there and one at the top so it still gives you a little bit of a fair bit of space in the mid in this blank section for you to write your message i'm not going to stamp the back of this with anything um i just want to leave it with the with the flowers so i'm going to bring in my stamping blends so stamping blends are stamping ups alcohol pens and we're going to use they come in as a combo so you've got a light and a dark shade of each color so we're going to use the poppy parade granny apple green We've got the names on the side there, Granny Apple Green, and we're just going to use the Dark Mango Melody, um, and that's to do our little centres. Um, I'm only using the dark one because the light one doesn't really show up, to be honest, and there isn't enough space there really to do a light and dark technique. The easiest way to do these is take your light colour first, and then you're just going to ink all over your rows. So we're going to colour in the whole thing. And we've stamped off the edges here and my pen's going to go over the edge, which is why I always use our grid paper to protect my desk and my cutting mat. Um, especially from these pens, because they are alcohol pens, so they're not very easy to get off um, if you do get them on anywhere. So we're just using the lighter colour first and colouring in all over. Do bear in mind when you're doing this that the colour will bleed through onto the back. So if you're using stamping blends on um, anything where you're going to see the back of the panel, um, you'll either want to put another panel on behind it um, or use stamping markers, stamping white markers, um, which 
aren't quite as, as um, don't soak into the cardstock quite as much and don't bleed through to the back but the alcohol markers the stamping blends really do make a make a difference they make, I, I think they're so much um it's so much easier to blend together than the markers um, and give a much nicer finish so i'm now going to take i won't do all of them um, i'll just do a couple i'm now going to take my dark poppy parade and i'm just going to go in around where the petals overlap each other okay now normally you would sort of work out where you want your light source to be coming from so my light source at the moment is coming down here um, and then you would work out where the shadows are but for flowers especially small ones like these I just tend to just go round everywhere that the, the, the petals are, or leaves overlap okay and then down in this bit I'll just do the whole of the bottom there so it's the overlapping edge and we're just going just a small line around there Finish that one then we're going to take the light poppy parade again and i'm using the bullet tip um because it's easier to control on smaller sections but you do have a um, brush tip as well which will give you um, a quicker coverage on very large areas so we're just going to go over the whole thing again and we're just pulling that darker color out slightly from where it's we've inked it just to blend it in I'm doing the same thing here so I'm pulling it I'm starting down at the bottom here and pulling the ink up to the lighter section on that one and doing the same thing on each of these petals just pulling the ink away from the line and that just blends it I will do a, a technique Tuesday using blends to give you more ideas on how to use them um, I'll probably do that in a couple of weeks time but for now um, at least you're getting a small a small class on stamping blends so I'm going to take the mango dark mango melody and I'm just going to use that to colour in the centres of my flowers it doesn't matter if it goes over the edge, the edge a bit there we go so I'll finish colouring those in um, when I we off up after we finish filming, so that I'll finish the card off. Um, but if you've got any bits of leaf showing there, then just use the granny apple green and exactly the same thing light first, then a darker line, and then the light again. So I'll put those back and I'll put that over there for now. So we've done out, we've bring this, this back in, and we've done our paper pattern paper designer series paper and turn it over and then that's when we're going to put our panel on the back there i'm not going to stick this on because i want to finish coloring it before i do just in case i go over the edge here and spoil the card so you would you you'll use um liquid adhesive on the back of that and stick that down onto the back panel so now we come to fitting in our stretchers so we want to turn the card over so that we've got the inside facing up okay you're going to tuck these flaps behind the card the easiest way to do it is to turn it around and using grid paper or a ruler just bring this down so that you get it onto a um, sort of a main inch mark so i've got it lay, lined up there to my eight inch mark don't need doesn't need to be all the way up because you you can see where it is so you don't need to come all the way off um but you need you're wanting to use that just to give you a guide as to where you're sticking your spreaders because you want to be them to be fairly evenly distanced so i'm going to put some liquid adhesive again on here you could use tear and tape 
um, but you do need to be very sure of where you're putting it before you put it down so I'm going to use the liquid adhesive try not to get it too close to the edge not when it's squidging out so you're going to put this down so that your flap is facing towards the back of the card then that way it, it won't be seen so easily when people look at the card so I'm going to line it up to the one inch mark from the back so I'm coming one inch from the back edge and I'm lining up this fold at the one inch making sure I'm going to fold it out like this and making sure that the so popping that there up to the top edge here and making sure I'm bringing that down a little bit more so you can see it better making sure that that lines up flush against this top edge before you stick it down okay then we're going to push that one over out of the way and take our second spreader and stretcher even and do the same thing liquid adhesive on there and this time same thing flap facing to the back of the card and I'm going to go there's my one inch mark um, no get the right edge so that's lined up on my one inch mark and I'm going to come one two three lines so three quarters of an inch further towards the front and do the same thing line up that fold with the one two three quarters of an inch line the fold up line the top edges of the two pieces up and stick that down so you'll end up with that now I'm going to push these over to the side keep these flaps out and you're going to just put liquid adhesive again on these flaps here do them both at the same time okay because this is where we start sticking the card together as a box so holding those down flat you're going to bring this piece of your card folding it over at this second score line so we're folding it in half bring that across so that it lies across the top of your um, uh, stretchers and we're just going to rub that down so that it sticks so you'll end up with that okay that's a bit loose why is it a bit loose didn't quite get that so we're folding that and squidge that in there sorry I took that out of shot while I was trying to fiddle with it so your edges are up the top of the card here okay then we're going to take this tab that we've got on the back here we're going to put some glue on there and then you're going to push the card together and oh, so we're pushing the flap underneath that edge and then flattening the card down oops as we go so if you've lined it all up right which mine's gone a little bit off line you should end up with a nice square nice square box mine's gone a little bit off line you can see I've got a, a little lip there where mine's not quite lined up properly but hey it's a handmade card they have these little quirks so we're gonna going to just push that down with the bone folder to make sure it's got a nice seal to it and then that's your basic box okay so now comes the decorating bit the, the proper decorating so that's your basic card for whatever you do whichever one you do and I I have made quite a lot of these um, over the last few years uh, when I was selling cards in my aunt's um, gift shop and they were very popular so I do that but each time has been a little bit different decoration has been different um, I've you've 
can do them with um, numbers. I've done I've done sort of fortieths, fiftieths, um, with with numbers up the back here, die cut numbers. Um, we do have a new set of letters and numbers as a die cut and stamp coming in the new catalogue. I don't have those to show you though. Uh, show you because a my pre order hasn't arrived yet, but also we've not been able to pre order those. We only get a select items that we can we can choose from um, and that wasn't one of them unfortunately but that will make a really nice um, number for a, a, an age birthday you could also use the letters because they're they're small enough that you would be able to do um, small names so mum dad you po could possibly get four four letters across there that would probably be about the most you could do but when those come I will do another box card to show you that so we're going to decorate this. This is where it gets different, it's slightly different to everybody else's. So I'm going to move that out of the way for a moment. And I'm going to bring in my secret ingredient. Oops. And these are my little springs. I'm missing one. Is the other one got? There it is, he's hiding down there. So this is just um, jewellery wire from a craft shop. Um, stamping up don't stock the jewelry wire but it's just thin jewelry wire um, and I've cut it into lengths I've got one length which is uh, five inches long then I've got three that are four inches and three that are three inches um, and you can just cut this is this jewelry wire is quite thin so you can cut it with a pair of scissors but don't use your best ones because it will blunt them um, but I've got a little pair of it's actually a um, pair of snips for button shafts so the backs of buttons um, but it's also very handy for cutting your little pieces of wire so just use those to cut it off and then I'm going to use a skewer just a small metal skewer to make the little springs so the first thing you want to do is just this little just at the very end here the very tip of your jewelry wire okay you want to take your thumb place it on the end of the jewellery wire and just wrap that round the skewer just once so that you create a little hook and I push that in so that it's fairly tight against the main piece of wire okay I hope you can see that all right so we've got a little hook there and that just helps when it comes to sticking it down to the card and I'm going to do that on each end so just do a small hook on each end then you want to take that hook and lay it down on the skewer put your finger over the top and you want to you want your finger about a quarter of an inch up the length of jewelry wire and you're just going to start winding it push it away from you and start winding it fairly closely around your skewer so you want each of the curls to be quite close together then that way um, you've got the option of pulling the spring out a bit to make your decoration piece higher but if you've put your if you've done your coils very um, quite quite far apart then you're always going to have that longer piece you can't get it down um, so make your curls oops try not to stab yourself with the skewer make your coils quite close together get to about the last quarter of an inch and then you're just going to bend that back towards your skewer again and then you can slide that off and you have a small spring I'll put my hand under there it might be better okay so you've got your small spring so that's going to be for my decoration. Now, as I said, I have used the uh, Bird Ballad paper. I've got a small strip of the cardstock, and this is Lovely Lipstick. Sadly, Lovely Lipstick has actually now sold out. It's one of our outgoing in colours. Outgoing in colours, yeah. Um, and it has sold out, so it's no longer available, I'm afraid. 
um, but I'd already prepare, prepared this when I found out. So this is um, just the paper from Freer's Bird, no, Bird Ballad. Freer's Bird Sweet, but Bird Ballad Sweet. Freer's Bird is the stamp set. So this one's got some really nice small pictures of birds. So I thought I'll cut those out and use them, as you can see down the bottom here. I've cut, cut a load of them out from there. Um, and then just fussy cut them um, so that I've got some small birds that I can use as embellishments. You also want to, once you've cut your bird out, you want to draw around it onto a piece of Whisper White card. Um, and so you draw around each one and then cut that out as well because that's going to be your backing um, to hide the back of the spring. Okay, so I've got this little fella is going to go up the top here on my five inch spring. Just put the lid on that for a minute. I got, um, do, 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 let's get this right, uh, blue and grey. Got this little fella with his background, his backer, is going to go on, haven't faced each other, so he's going to go on my left hand spring. This little fella, which is an orange and yellow, is going to go that side. And then I've got a, I've got a, one of the um, roses, one of the flowers from the um, dress, dress to impress stamp set. I've used those, coloured them in again, the same, um, and then die cut them using the die set um, and also cut the back as well. So I've got one of those. Um, no, I think I'm going to use the. I think I was going to use the double in the middle. I'll just make sure when I've got all my pieces out. And then I've got one, two single roses, and one double to go in the centre. Uh, I'm not sure where his background's gone. I'm not sure where his background's gone. I must, be, I must have had a single in there. So that's the background. Uh, it must be a single. Oh well, never mind. I'm missing a missing a back, but I can I can deal with that later. So those are the bits that are going to go onto the springs. So the way we do that, I do this bird first. On the back of your bird, you're going to put a little piece of tear and tape. Yeah, and I'm going to put that down by his feet where my spring is going to go. Let's just make sure that's not showing on the other side. It is slightly. So I'm going to get my sticky scissors. These are the ones that I don't mind getting messy. And I'm just going to snip into where that tear and tape has overlapped and then I can tuck that back when I peel the backing off so peel that off and I tuck that little bit in so that it's not showing on the other side and then we're going to take our spring let's push these out of the way a little bit I'm going to take the spring and I'm going to stick the one of the ends with the little hook I'm just going to stick that onto the back of his feet. Okay. Releasing my finger. Then I'm going to take another little piece of tear and tape. So I know this overlaps slightly. So before I do that, I'm just going to snip off a little edge. And I'm going to put that over the top. So that we've sandwiched the spring in between two pieces of tear and tape and this is why we do the hook so that it's got the tear and tape has got something to grip onto rather than just a small um, straight length of wire because that could easily pull out whereas doing it with a little hook it just makes it a little bit more secure so I'm going to pull the backing off of that piece of tear and tape and then 
I'm going to use liquid glue all over the back of the rest of the bird. Come on, down you come. Just squeeze it very gently. If you're new to using the Tombow liquid glue, um, you do you only need to be very gentle with it. A little bit goes a very long way. So you don't want to squeeze your tube too hard, otherwise you'll end up with a huge blob coming out. Um, and you get it all over the place. So there's my turned head bird. So I'm going to stick that and line that up on the back. So I'm lining the, the beak and the head of the bird up first so that the feet aren't sticking together yet until I've got it in the right place. So just make sure that that all lines up and then I can stick my feet down over on that tear and tape. So there's my first bird on his spring. There you go. And you would go on to finish doing the rest of your um, your your elements in the same way. So I'm going to do the three birds and the flower on the four inch springs and the three flowers here on the um, no, they're the wrong way around. They're the four inch springs on the three inch springs. Okay. To attach your pieces to your box, your elements to your box, you're going to do the same thing as you just did. You're going to do sort of basically what we've just done. We're going to put some tearing tape down either side. We're going to two pieces of tearing tape down this piece. So this is a piece, little piece of um, card that was left over from the main piece that we cut out. And I'm just going to use that and I'm going to cut small pieces of small pieces off of here and then cut that in half. And then we'll use those as my snips. Snips hiding. And then we're going to cut up the card there. So we want a bit, bit of card left either side because we want to have um, a bit where we can put the glue. So I'm going to do this one just do this one to show you and I remove my tear and tape put it back in she says come on off you come remove the tear and tape and I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom hook of the spring we're just going to attach that down onto a piece of tear and tape on the card and place another piece of finding the end tear and tape on top to hold it together so we're sandwiching that little hook so if you notice I've stuck it down so that the bird the actual bird the picture that we want is facing me and the, the adhesive is on the same size as it's on the face side because we want to stick this behind the stretcher so that it doesn't get seen Okay, it just looks so much more professional and tidy if you do it that way. And I stick a bit of glue, Tombow glue, down the sides. And I'm going to take that and we're going to stick this first, this back bird, in the centre of this back stretcher. So I'm just going to line that up roughly. It doesn't matter if it's not exact. Okay. And you're lining the piece of card up with the top of bring that up a little bit. The piece of card with the top of your stretcher, and just press that together so that we sandwich the spring in between those two pieces of card. Okay. So if I angle that that way, you can see there's your little square of card in there holding the spring to the back of the stretcher and then you can just pull your strip pull your spring out a little bit gently until you get your bird to the height you want so if I fold that down flat and that's how it's going to post so it's going to be flat like that when it posts I actually want that to come back so as you can see try you'll see trying to get the spring to go back down again 
is very difficult which is why I said about keeping your um, coils close together okay because it's, it's easy to pull it out it's not easy to push it back and that's got a bit wrinkled but that's fine that's that's part of the charm okay so I've just pulled that out so that the bird is just short of the tip the top of the card um, this will fit into a six by six square envelope um, which you'll have to either make or get from a craft shop because unfortunately stamping up don't do that size um, but it does just fit because obviously this is six inches so it only does it just only just fit so you don't want anything poking over the top here the sides are okay because it's narrower than six inches but not over the top or bottom okay so that's how we're going to do the um, the decorations on springs. So as I've done with this one, you can see I actually um, made a bit of a boo-boo, deliberate mistake with this one, just to show you how not to do it. Um, and I, well, instead of sticking my stretchers to match up the top here, I stuck them to match down the bottom. So you can see that they, um, I've had to put the flowers on long pieces of card which looks really tatty i'm not very happy with that but it, i didn't want to waste it so make sure that you stick your stretches up to the top of the card not the bottom um, but i've done the same thing here with the flowers so i've got my large rows at the back there um, and i think these came f i can't remember what set these came from now i should have written it down but I'm always doing that, forgetting to write things down. Um, the paper is from Poppy Parade. The flowers, I'm not sure about, but I will put them onto the um, blog and the description on YouTube, um, what I use for those. So I've got large, large rows at the back. I've got these smaller flowers at the front here, and then these really tiny rosebuds at the very front. So we've got three in the middle, three at the front, and one at the back. Um, and as you can see, they all bounce around on their springs. Um, I've coloured them again with Stampin' Blends. And I've added some Wink I don't know if you can see that glistening. Um, you can just about pick it up on this rose, this flower here. You can see the, the, the glittery, glittering from the Wink of Stella. And I've put some little um, gems in the middle, little, little yellow gems um, that I had kicking around in the center there so that's your springy bits then on your flaps let's push those to one side i will finish this um this card and do pictures um for when it goes on to the blog um tomorrow no today later today even maybe well, it should be later today so i've got two birds here that one two there he is two birds here that are they've been cut out again i don't need a background on a background one for these because they're going to stick on the, the flaps of the card and i'm going to attach these with some dimensionals so that they are facing towards the front of the card uh i'll use a little mini one oh, i might have to cut that in half yeah, I'm going to have to cut that in half. Even these mini ones sometimes are still a little bit big for some of the very small areas, like their feet and legs. So just use, just cut it in half and just use the half of the mini stamp, mini dimensional. So I've got those that on there. And then I'm just going to take those off, the backing off of those. And as I say, I want it facing towards the front of the card, so I'm going to put this little robin on this side of the card. Oops. Stand still. And I want to put him on so that his feet are straight. Like that. And then I've got a little blue, green and yellow bird here. And I'm going to do the same thing with this little fella. Uh, let's put a small one there. And a little half on his... This one's got very thin legs and feet. Oops, 
peel the backings off and this is going to go on the other side of the other side panel that is coming this side and this little fella goes the other and points down instead of up and then I've got some flowers some of the little roses and I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to give the roses a little bit of a curl with the bone folder so place your thumb on top of the edge of the bone folder and just pull the card through it gently don't pull too hard otherwise you'll you'll strip you'll um, rip the card but you just want to pull it gently so that you you're getting a slight curl on your flowers and I've got a double and a single I believe for each side uh, a double and a single a double and a single for that one I think I've got that right. I've got a double and a single for each side. If not, I could just make some more. There we go. So double and a single. And I'm going to put one down there. As I said, you can get away with um, overlapping these flaps slightly. Um, but not over the top or bottom. So dimensional on the back of there. And we're going to stick that one down the bottom there. And this one is going to go at the top here behind his tail. So I have a big one there. And I'll have a little one there. So this just gives us a bit more dimension to the card. If you don't want to, the card to be quite so um, layered, you can just put these down with adhesive um, if you're concerned about postage but um, I'm not too worried usually these sort of cards will get given to people as opposed to posted to people and all I'm going to do I should have done this before I put it on really I'm going to put some Winkostella this is the clear Winkostella which is like a glitter pen um, it's liquid so it's it's like using a fountain pen but you've got liquid glitter in there it's not glue based uh, I'm not quite sure what the uh, the composition is but it dries quite quickly um, that is actually dry now pretty much um, and I'm going to do that on all of my flowers it is easier to do it before you stick them on. But I never like to do anything the easy way. I was born awkward. There we go. So you've got your Winkostella glistening there on those flowers. And you're going to do the same thing with the other side. So that they match. Ooh, just hold his tail back down there. And then on the front here, I've got a tag that I've cut out from the COVID-19 and I've mentioned that a couple of times now um, you've got links on the blog and also on the Facebook page um, I will put the link again in the um, comments but it's for our COVID-19 give back so the profits from the sale of this PDF um, they, it's $12 it's only available in dollars unfortunately but it will be whatever the exchange rate is to pounds um, when you buy it um, it's $12 and the, as I say the pro the profits from it go to um, ch two charities one's uh, a, a section of the World Health Organization and there's another um, ch charity that's that's trying to fight do research and fight the uh, COVID-19 virus um, so it's just stamping up's way of giving back um, and we have so far given uh, donated thousands and thousands of dollars i will listen to the um facebook live again where sarah told us what the total is so far um and put that on the the, the description and the, and the blog post as well so that you know how much has been donated so far um if you are interested in that then as i say i'll put the link on and it's full of um nice sentiments it's full of 
funny sentiments. Um, it's got um, some quite funny, <laughs> funny pictures on it. Um, a couple of them referring to toilet paper, which those of us in the UK will completely understand. Um, so I've just cut that out with one of the stitch nested, nested, stitch nested dies. Yeah, stitched nested, stitch nested label dies. Um, to make a tag, and as you can see, that does overlap. So I've just removed the backing from my dimensionals and I'm going to stick that in the middle like that and can't read it, can't quite read it. It says, I can't wait to hug you when this is all over. Um, and I think we can all um, understand that, that feeling. So this time I'm going to do my um, little flowers, my winker still up before I stick them on. And I'm just going to do quickly do these four little flowers and attach those to my tag. I am getting a bit conscious of the time, um, so I will show you how I'm going to do those. I won't actually stick them on just yet. I'll do that after, and I'm going to. So we're going to have. We're going to sort of go like that, and then tuck those under sort of something like that down the two sides is the plan okay so that's my my take on um, my way of making a box card I shall bring this finished one back in again um, the um, sentiment it's your birthday let's let's digitally party um, again is from the PDF so I hope you enjoyed that um, and you get a chance to have a play with the technique. Um, as I say, it's been a good seller for me. So if you do sell your cards, it's definitely worth worth giving a go. Um, and I hope you'll come and join me again for another Funky, Fi Funky Fold Friday or one of my other YouTube videos um, sometime soon. So have a good, have a great day, have a great week, stay safe and happy stamping.